Video surveillance cameras are everywhere. And the next step is to connect them all and make sense of the data. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Andreas Pedersen. He is the CEO of Arculees. Welcome, Andreas. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. So what type of work do you do at Arculees? Uh, everything. But uh, what we do is we uh, exist for two reasons. We want to make the world a safer place and we want to help be, uh, companies optimize their business using video surveillance um, footage and provide intelligent solutions for them. Some call it connected intelligent video. Explain what video cloud IoT as a service is. So it is, we are, uh, it's a term uh, and it is a new market opportunity that we have addressed. Uh, what it means is we're taking uh, unstructured video data and making it structured, basically making it sense out of it. And on top of that, we're also correlating that data with a lot of IoT data coming from all types of different devices that you typically would see on uh, a location where you have video surveillance. When you combine these two, you get a very powerful and accurate uh, solution that helps everyone using it be proactive rather than reactive. Why should enterprises consider connected intelligent video at this time? I mean, what benefits will they see? So they definitely see staffing benefits. They see higher security. Uh, and like I said, they can optimize their business. Uh, the human eye today can only cover so much. And well, at least when you work in our industry, you see video cameras everywhere. But there isn't really staff to be looking at all of that footage. So what we're doing is we are looking for them and making sure that they only get the information they need when it's relevant. And that way they can cover so much more and be so much more proactive or even preventive, preventing things from happening by our service, giving them the information before they would ever realize it themselves. How does connected intelligent video make public places safer? So one good example we often would like to talk about is, let's say you have a big stadium event or you have a big public event. And a good example is the, a missing child. And if you have a missing child today, and if you a guard or a security operator have to search for thousands of cameras, it's gonna take a long time. But if the parents can present a picture on their cell phone or something, uh, of the child, maybe even better if it's the picture is from the same day, then the system can automatically find where the child was last seen by a surveillance camera, and then they dispatch the guards out to that specific area. So we know retailers are using connected intelligent video. Give us some examples of those applications. So it can be anything for uh, like analyzing the pattern of where people are moving in the store. By knowing that you can optimize your shelf placements for certain products. Um, in our industry, we call it uh, heat maps or where dwell times are. So where the customers are uh, heading when they enter the store and when they exit the store and everything in between. So product placing there, but it can also help with queue management. For example, often when there is a long queue to the cash register, uh, we can detect how many people are in the queue and then notify them so they can send out more personnel so you don't have to wait. How do neural networks teach cameras to think? So, that's a, it's a very long answer if I were to give the very technical one, but, the way you say it is, if you take it from a technical perspective, you don't have to understand the problem you're solving. A classical engineering problem, they had to map out what is a face that's an oval, and in that face you have eyes and ears and everything else. And they really had to understand the geometry of what they're seeing. With AI and ML, you basically collect the video data, you label it either automatically or manually, and then you retrain the network based on that data and the system automatically learns how to detect certain things based on what it's being trained with. So it's a very different mindset for a technologist or even our customers who want to optimize a certain scenario using our ML services. 
You mentioned earlier about missing children, and I imagine in urban areas that can be a, even more of a challenge. So, and cities are looking to become smarter and using video to do that. So how can connected intelligent video be applied in some smart city applications in high urban areas? So first of all, it's, you, you can only do so much depending on how much video surveillance you have. And uh, uh, the more data you have, the better it is. That also speaks to the AI ML piece. I just want to say that. Um, the more cameras that are available on public places, um, the more training data we can be building over time and the more our customers or um, others are willing to contribute that data to us, the better and faster we will be to discover all types of things. Another area uh, that we, especially within smarter cities, is traffic problems. And we can count the amount of cars in and out of certain areas, uh, detect vehicles, and so on. Um, and when we are doing that, that data can then be used to optimize city planning and other things. And when they are adding that, uh, how do I say, it's always a moving target for any city planner, but at least we can help them get the data quicker that they need to sort of start the next project. When implementing a connected, intelligent video system, what are the steps that should be considered uh, that to observe and insecure, uh, to, to ensure uh, privacy and security? So we have had, from inception of this company, uh, we have had security by design. Uh, and it's, we are using external agencies to do anything from penetration attack to denial of service attacks and so on. Uh, we're taking security very seriously. We are uh, GDPR compliant, and uh, we have also joined the EU Cloud of Conduct um, to make sure that it's something we always, uh, we honor basically, if we honor security, we will automatically honor, or at least take a big step to honor privacy as well. Andreas Pedersen, thank you so much for joining and give us, giving us some insight on this topic. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work or connect with you personally, how can they do that? Uh, the best way is to follow us on LinkedIn and then contact us through there, or you can go to our website and find more information there. Sounds good. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe find me by going to tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social channels. Thanks for watching.